the stands or any of us know what's going to happen, but we're all excited to see this last uh, give me 11 lap shootout here for the end. The lights are out on the pace car, and the pace car continues to pull away. They're starting to uh, gather around Victory Circle in the infield, seeing who they will crown as the winner of race number two. Pace car is off, Dick Gilman. One more time, give us the top ten roll call that you turn number three. It is going to be an 11-lap shootout. Scott McLaughlin is going to lead them back to the green flag with Alexander Rossi, Scott Dixon, Colton Herta, and Santino Ferrucci, the top five mark to settle it here at the Milwaukee Mile. One of those times with Santino Ferrucci is usually worth the price of admission. We'll see if he holds true to form. Front four start to separate themselves a little bit as they roar into turn number one. Scott McLaughlin got a great restart and it's Scott Dixon who is aggressive into turn number one. He'll take second from Alexander Rossi. Colton Herta comes with him, jumps to third out of turn two. Colton Herta looks awfully strong. He's to the inside of Scott Dixon. They'll go side by side into turn number three. It looks like Colton Herta's going to make the pass dick. Scott Dixon says not so fast. They're side by side in the exit in turn number four. And this is great news for Scott McLaughlin as they run side by side. He's opened up about a 15 car length advantage. Dixon now clears Colton Herta into turn number one. Behind them, Ferrucci and BK go side by side. Still McLaughlin out front. Santino Ferrucci tried to track down Alexander Rossi. VK tried to track down uh, Santino Ferrucci as they set up for turn number three. Scott McLaughlin with a comfortable advantage to the start finish line, 10 to go. Roars across that start finish line. That two tone blue Chevrolet for Team Penske. Scott Dixon trying to dig deep. He's might have closed a bit on this lap. He's got it down to seven car lengths down the back straightaway. Front three with pretty good separation. That's McLaughlin, that's Dixon, and that's Herta. Alexander Rossi now has his mirrors full up of Santino Ferrucci. Ferrucci on the charge through three and four. Reedus VK trying to keep pace. Pretty good battle between Kirkwood and Erickson. That's the battle for seventh as the leaders head back to turn one. And again, Scott Dixon continues to inch his way forward. It was seven car lengths. This time down the back straightaway, he's got it down to about five. A pair of Scots battling into turn number three here in Milwaukee. And it is six tenths of a second off of turn number four. The advantage, Scott McLaughlin over Scott Dixon as they roar back to the start finish line with seven laps to go. It's Penske versus Ganassi. It's Chevrolet versus Honda. It's as good as it gets in IndyCar racing. Again, out of turn number two, McLaughlin and Dixon running that same middle groove down the back stretch again. For all intents and purposes, Colton purposes, Colton Herta has lost the, the, the battle with those front two, Davey Hamilton. Yeah, yeah he, he, for whatever reason, just didn't fire off like normal. Now, he's by himself in between Dixon and Rossi, but no challenge to, to gain a spot and really no challenge to losing right now as Frucci gets by Rossi. And they go side by side into turn number one. Nick Gilman to the battle for third. That fourth. is the battle for the fourth spot. Ferrucci wiggles at quarter entry. He's going to wrestle that spot away from Alexander Rossi. Gets on his horse and charges down the back stretch. Behind them, VK and Erickson. That's a pretty good battle. That's a battle for the sixth position. As a VK sees Erickson try to drive to the bottom of the racetrack, but he's going to shut the door on him up at turn number four. Yeah, VK got a really nice strong uh, run through the center of the corner. Now he's going to move down to try to break the draft, to try to stall out that run by Erickson as they're all trying to call their way back into the top five. Eight tenths of a second, the lead for Scott McLaughlin as he roars off of turn number four. He will see four laps to go this time in the starter stand as he sets sail for turn number one. And that charge by Scott Dixon is stalled out again about uh, about five car lengths behind as they're into turn number one. Dixon try to move up the racetrack, find a little clean air, try to run down McLaughlin down the back stretch. Both heard it for now as a firm grasp on that third spot on the podium in looks like Santino Ferrucci has kind of wrangled fourth away. Alexander Rossi trying to keep pace before long. Marcus Erickson's going to catch him. Scott McLaughlin, three laps to go, roars into turn number one. Yep, McLaughlin and Dixon just both got around the lap car of Christian Rasmussen. That didn't stall the run for either one. They're still glued about five car lengths apart down the back straightaway here at the Milwaukee Mile. It's, hold, it's holding steady at about six to seven tenths of a second for Scott McLaughlin. McLaughlin comes off of turn number four. Two laps to go for Scott McLaughlin. McLaughlin here at the Milwaukee Mile. All the fans here at Milwaukee are on their feet cheering on McLaughlin and Dixon into turn number one. Again, Dixon try to search around the racetrack, find any amount of speed to run down McLaughlin down the back stretch. It's up to eight tenths of a second now. The PNC Bank Machine makes a hard charge into turn number three. Scott McLaughlin will see the white flag this time by off of turn number four. That Gallagher Chevrolet for Team Penske and Scott McLaughlin roars underneath Aaron Likens. White flag into turn number one. Good entry. Absolutely. Absolutely stable through turns one and two. McLaughlin trying to hold on to win here at Milwaukee. Holding steady at seven tenths of a second for Scott McLaughlin. He has led 84 laps on the day. 
got Dixon with a hard charge. He's cut it down to five tenths of a second. McLaughlin off of turn number four for the final time. The advance auto part checkered flag is in the air. Pull center yesterday, race winner today. Scott McLaughlin goes to victory lane. He wins the high V Milwaukee Mile, 250 race number two. Scott Dixon, Colton Herta, Santino Ferrucci, Marcus Erickson complete the top five. <laughs> Let's go, boys! Catch you up at uh, Winter and Team Good State, my man. Woo! Let's get three to the boot, boys. Let's go. A P2 for Scott Dixon, Michael Young. I don't know if it was me that said it was going to be a long day or you, but I, clearly it wasn't a long day for you. That was a fantastic run today, Scott, and uh, for this team and for what happened to Alex Pelot, all in all, fantastic. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a rough start to our weekend. You know, the car was so good on Friday and uh, qualifying, I don't you know, know, we just lost the balance and put us in a bit of a hole. Yesterday, we just uh, couldn't catch a break, you know, so it was nice uh, to roll from 17th there and, uh, you know, get up to second spot. I think if we had another restart, car was definitely good on long runs. Uh, traffic was a little iffy. We couldn't run on the black, but, uh, man, the car was fast. So huge thank you to, you know, everybody on uh, the PNC Bank number no. 9, Honda, of course. Uh, it was a dream to drive out there today. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can go one better uh, in a couple of weeks. And how about being back on the podium here at Milwaukee? Yeah, it's fun, man. It's, uh, it's cool to be back here. It was great to see the crowd turning up out here. And, you know, it's the first time back in many years. And hopefully we can keep this tradition going and uh, fill those stands up more. Enjoy that cream puff. Thanks, buddy. There you go. That's Scott Dixon, DJ Clark. I'm down here with third place finisher Colton Herta. Colton, an alternate strategy that paid out in spades for you to be able to be here on the podium. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we were, even on the other strategy, we were going to get on the podium. We had a really fast race car. Um, but, you know, the guys did an incredible job in the pits. Good job on the box with strategy. The Gamebridge Honda was fast, and that's all I can ask for as a driver. So uh, I had a lot of fun, you know, 18th to 3rd, so I'm really happy about that. Looked like you could place this car anywhere. Does that give you hope going into next year to give you a little bit of an idea of what this car can do and maybe mount a good challenge next year as well? Yeah, I mean, we know we know how to make a good car work here now. You know, there's a lot of unknowns, and even after testing, we weren't sure if our package was going to be strong or not. So it's, uh, it's really reassuring to come here and, and see that it is. All right, that's Colton Herta. Over to you. All right, Santino Ferrucci, a couple of fourth-place finishes on a weekend in Milwaukee. I know you'd like to have been on that podium, but that was a hell of a weekend for you. Yeah, honestly, hats off to the crew, man. They did an amazing job in pit lane. Uh, it's great to have the Phoenix Investors car running up front both days after not so great of a qualifying. You know, I just really want to thank everybody and thank, you know, Sexton Properties, Chevrolet. I mean, we had a bad, fast race car and, you know, just shy of the podium. It's funny to say we're disappointed with two forts, but, I mean, that's huge for us as a team. And, you know, we'll go into Nashville uh, still on that trophy hunt. More opportunities for Santino Ferrucci to do Santino Ferrucci things. Well done this weekend. Thank you. Santino Ferrucci, DJ Clark. I'm down here with a very jubilant Marcus Erickson. Marcus, after a rough day yesterday, we talked to you this morning. You said you had the speed, and you certainly showed it. Big hugs here from Santa Tito Ferrucci. A great run. Yeah, it was a great day for us. I think, you know, we we were doing a really good job in the pits, uh, good starts and restarts. We were lacking a little bit of pace there mid-race. Mid I just couldn't, you know, we put ourselves in a position to, to fight for the win, but we just couldn't really keep up with the co uh, quickest cars. But, you know, we, we had to rebuild three out of four corners the whole rear end after yesterday's crash so uh you know the guys just did a fantastic job to get that car so competitive and uh, a top five and, and it was fun that last stint after the yellow where we had to you know just push hard and overtake some cars and last lap pass for for a top five is always a good feeling so yeah really proud of the 28 group all right that's marcus erickson in fifth we throw over to jake query it is a jubilant scott mclaughlin here in victory circle who i went around and i think you actually went around and high-fived about half the fans that came down here. Obviously, I could tell just the relief of the weekend. I mean, Heck I mean, of a run. I've had a blast here this weekend. Milwaukee's turned it on. Uh, I can't wait to get out the back and have a beer in the, in the beer stands and have a bit of fun. So, uh, yeah, appreciate all you guys. The Gallagher Chevy was unreal. And, um, yeah, just rolling Nashville. But, um, yeah, that was a blast, man. That was probably the most fun IndyCar race I've had ever in my career. It's interesting because what happened yesterday in a hiccup kind of helped you today because you had, if I'm not mistaken, one extra fresh set of tires, and that grip helped you out. Then, of course, you made that last stop. But if you could recap for us just how good that Gallagher car felt on that fresh run. Oh, we worked really hard. You know, we, we were pretty bad yesterday, and, and I didn't do a good job either. I hardly slept last night because I was just so stressed about the bad job I did. And, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the tenacity that we showed as a group. Pit stops were unreal as per usual and um, Thirsty Threes were ripping and just really proud of everyone. You know, we'll just keep working here. All we can do is win races. The Gallagher Chevy, it's my first time with Gallagher on the car and I won a race, so I'm pumped with that. So really excited. Car number three, win number three on the season, the seventh in the IndyCar career so far for Scott McLaughlin. Congratulations. Michael? A 10th place finish for Will Power, 33 points back. Will, that was about the wildest race I think I can remember in some time. You have a smile on your face as you look at your competitors out there. What's going through your mind right now? Ah, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oof. Man, we had a shot there. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I let that go, you know. What happened in, in turn four? I just spun up, man. I just spun up. It was in second gear. I was used to first gear restarts. Just my bad, completely. Yeah. Yep, I'll be kicking myself on that one. But we, yeah, I still have a chance, but a very long shot. But it's still not over, and, and you did a great job working your way back onto the lead lap on that final set. The crew did an amazing job as well. They did, yeah. I mean, they did all the right stuff, man. I was the one that made that mistake um, big time. Yeah. All right, we'll see you in Nashville. Thank you for the time. Thank, thank you. That's Will Power. Let's go to DJ Clark. Down here with seventh place finishing Renus VK, and you were just telling me that last round of pit stops, you had to make a little bit of an unorthodox strategy call, but it worked out for you. Yes, yeah, so we had to go to uh, 25 lap old tires, so uh, it wasn't ideal, but they were better than the 50 lap old tires we had on the car. Uh, but yeah, that, that made it tough. It was really hanging on by a thread there at the end, but you know, P7, I think we can call a very, very good day. Uh, it was sketchy out there, a lot of guys uh in trouble but no we had a we had a good day and i think uh i think this is what we need to do to finish out the season in, on, a, on a strong note well you certainly did have a strong note here that's renis vk uh let's discuss the manufacturer's point standing as we head into the final race of the season davy uh good day for chevrolet first and fourth honda good day second and third and fifth but chevrolet leads 1426 points to 1260 yeah haven't put pen to paper but i think it's over i think chevrolet's got this locked up at this point i think even if honda was to sweep out in nashville um chevrolet still has got the job done right now looks and very strong to have, uh, you know, a champion, um, you know, with a Honda, but then the manufacturer with a Chevrolet and the 500 with a Chevrolet. So kind of mix it up this year. Uh, mixed it up indeed. We could tell you there were seven leaders, 13. 15 lead changes, six cautions for 57 laps. Your leaders, Scott McLaughlin, 85 laps. Power, 64 laps. Rossi, 46 laps. Herta, 43 laps. And Ferrucci led six laps. Let's hear from Alex Polo. Not an ideal day, but Michael Young, it could have been oh so much worse. A 19th place finish for Alex Polo. You were at one point out of the championship lead. You now are 33 points to the positive side. You kept a very positive attitude. I think at one point, Will Power was running six still on the lead lap, and you said nice and spicy, and things got very spicy out there when he spun out. Walk us through that day, though. Yeah, um, first rating, I think, for everybody at the 10 or at the Ganassi camp. But, um, yeah, nothing we could have done differently there uh, today. Uh, we made mistakes in the past, but I don't think today was that day. Um, and, yeah, we, we were just trying to get some points. Um, at the end, I think we, we overtook, like, nine cars, so we survived more than nine other cars. So, um, yeah, once we were already in the, in the worst-case scenario, I think we ended up pretty good. Um, and, yeah, I, obviously a bit uh, surprised about what happened there on the restart uh, with the 12. But, uh, yeah, nothing that we could have done differently in the 10 car. When did you spin back into race mode knowing that, hey, I can make up some points here? Uh, well, as soon as I got into the car, I mean, Perfect. you never give up. So, um, yeah, I knew that uh, if, if you want to win the championship, it could be only one point. So you need to, uh, once something happened, um, I wanted to cry. Obviously, everybody wanted to cry and stop and go home. But um, it's not the spirit that we have. It's not the mentality. And we knew that that was not the mentality we needed to uh, fight for the championship in Nashville. And that's why you're a champion. Well done today. Thank you. That's Alex Pelot, 33 points ahead of Will Power as we go into Nashville in two weeks. Good stuff, Michael Young. Thank you. 50 points ahead of Scott McLaughlin and Davey. If Pelot starts the race at Nashville, that eliminates McLaughlin. So it's essentially between he and Will Power when we get to Nashville. Yeah, that's right. And we've seen that that gap can be closed. But 
it takes a bad luck on one of these driver's side, and it would be below at this point to have another bad day like that. And we don't see that very often, honestly. So uh, right now, he's the definitely favored going into this last race. I think uh, it's going to be a fantastic time in Nashville. Haven't been there for a long time either. And I expect to have an exciting, great race like this. I hope Firestone brings the same kind of tire and that gr- the, the track widens out to where we can go two and th- three wide there as well. So it's going to be fun. Great, great stuff all weekend. Safe travels. We'll see you in Nashville. All right. Looking forward to it.